Hey guys, Charlene FX, your favorite female trader, back with another video. Uh, so I told you guys, I promised you guys I would be a lot more consistent with dropping some videos. So um, here I am with another one. You guys have been really, really great with me, really patient with me. I uh, got a great response to my last few videos, so that really gives me the, you know, the little push, a little motivation that I need to keep on dropping these videos for you guys. So uh, if you like, like the video, like the video, okay. <laughs> uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and also follow me on Instagram at Charlene FX because I'm always dropping, you know, educational, valuable content for you guys every single day. So with this video, we're going to be talking about obviously you saw the title, uh, supply and demand. Um, it's not going to be that that long a video because supply and demand is a it's a very powerful concept. However, it is um, it's it's. It, it kind of plays hand in hand with support and resistance, okay? So if you guys go and watch my support and resistance video, if you haven't already, it really ties hand in hand with support and resistance. They're not the same thing, but they're kind of the same concept, okay? If that makes uh, that makes sense. So I have a GJ open here already. So as you guys know, GJ is my favorite pair. So we're going to obviously, uh, I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about on the pair here. So with supply and demand, guys, supply and demand is mostly just structure telling you what what price may or may not do in a specific area and it tells you where price is strong and where price is not so strong in other words where do you have the most sellers where do you have the most buyers where is it that they collide in the market and who who has the highest probability of taking control in a specific uh, price area okay so Couple things that I want to talk about with supply and demand. Basically, my favorite time frames to analyze supply and demand on is uh, the one hour, 30 minute, and the 15 minute. For example sake, we're going to stick with the 30 and the 15 minute time frames for this video's sake. But uh, you definitely want to look at supply and demand no higher than maybe the four hour. But you want to use supply and demand mostly when you're looking for your your entries. You know your sniper entries. Um, you want to look at those time frames because that's that's where you're gonna get the, the you're, gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to maximize your your entry positions better on the time frames that you actually ent enter on. So you want to analyze your supply and demand zones on those time frames so that you're able to capitalize on them. So looking at uh, GJ here on the 15 minute time frame, let's go to the 30 minute time frame and start for now. Okay, I'm not gonna go any higher than that because uh, we really don't need to for this example, but. Looking at supply and demand, guys, the some some secrets, right? It's called secret supply and demand secrets. These really aren't secret secrets, but these are this is the way that I interpret supply and demand and the way that I look at the market and how I use it to my benefit so that I'm able to profit a lot more on uh, on, on my pairs and on my charts with supply and demand. Using it side by side with price action, support and resistance, and you know candlestick analysis and things like that. So you can't just use it by itself. Supply and demand, guys, is just one confluence. It's not you know the end all be all with the trade. You have to use it in um, conjunction with your other other confirmations, your other confluences. But it's a very strong confirmation if you're using it. Okay, it is a very strong confirmation. So if we're looking at GJ here on on with supply and demand, your supply areas, guys, are always going to be at the top. Okay, if you don't know that, supply is always at the top and demand is always at the bottom. So if I use my rectangle here and I want to draw a supply zone, I'm going to draw it right at the top somewhere. It's always at the top where the, the highest level of where price is. That is where gonna, your supply area is going to be and your demand area is going to be somewhere on the bottom. It's always on the bottom where the lowest price area is. Okay, so if you're looking for supply at the top somewhere, you should be looking for demand over at the bottom. Now, let's say it's vice versa, right? Let's say price breaks below your demand zone. Well, now this becomes your supply zone, and now you have to find a new area of demand. Okay, so just you just go with price with how price is forming, and that will tell you how to label your supply and demand zones. So looking here, when I look for supply and demand zones, guys, okay, this is a big deal. You want to look for where a big push happened in the market. Where did price come to and immediately reject from that area and then have a sharp reversal? Okay, so basically if we're looking at this structure right here, this price structure right here, as you guys can see here, price was bouncing, bouncing, just basically ranging in and in, in and out of this area right here. So I want to wait and see 
where did price finally break out to? Did price break out to the upside or did it break to the downside? Now, once I see that, hey, price has broken to the downside here, where is the first candle? You wanna find that first candle that's gonna tell you this was the start of this big move, okay? So this big move down here, right? Let's talk about this move right here. Let me highlight it really quickly, all right? This move right here. This was a big move because this move broke out from this entire range that was up here. So if I'm looking for the first candle that started this move, I wanna look for the first candle that broke below all of, the, all of this ranging over here. So let me grab my box here and I'm looking for, obviously this is a high area, right? So we're looking for our supply zone. So once we look here and we say, okay, price, this was the lowest price had come, right here below here. So my first candle that broke below all of this is this candle right here, okay? This is the power of price action, guys understanding how candles are forming. So this is your first candle here. So this first, the first candle that started the, the big move, guys, that is going to be where you're gonna draw your zone from. So you're gonna draw your zone from the top to, of the body to the bottom, and it's gonna be from wick to wick, always wicks, always wicks. So it's gonna be from the top of the wick to the bottom of the wick, okay? Now, in this example, this candle actually doesn't have a wick, so we're gonna draw from the top of the body to the bottom of the wick. So you're gonna grab the candle, uh, your your rectangle and you're going to drag it as far over as you can okay as far over as you can now i got to go back in time to show you guys a better example but this is just to ex explain this concept when you're looking for your supply zones you're looking for where your breakout started from from where price happened and that is going to become your supply zone so now you're looking for your demand zone where did price come to at the bottom and do a sharp reversal well we can't really draw one here because price is currently in a downtrend and we don't have any kind of reversal that that, that came up yet but however let's say this all wasn't here okay so let's use bar replay really quickly and let's take this piece off here and if you look here you'll see that price made another sharp drop here so price came here range 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 and then it made a sharp drop so where would just uh your demand area be if you were looking for your demand area well this candle broke out here broke below all these lows here but you're looking for a reversal this is still in the downtrend so this is not going to be my demand zone my demand zone is looking for a reversal so if i was looking at this here and nothing else this would be my demand zone because price had a, had came down here rejected and made a sharp move to the upside now if the whole bunch of candles started forming here and pushed to the upside now i know that i now have a demand zone here and I'm going to draw it from the bottom to the top at right, the start of the move and drag it all the way over. Okay. And when you drag it all the way over, guys, you're trying to see where is price going to react to when it comes to that price level again. Okay. So that's why I do that. So that's that example. Okay. So let me go back in time so I can show you guys some better, better examples. So you guys can have a better understanding of what I mean. Okay. So here's an example here. Okay. Here's an example right here. We have price that was ranging right here, right? Price was in a big range right here, kind of made like a little mini double bottom here. And then it started pushing to the upside. It broke above, retested, and then continued up. Well, where did this move initially start? Well, I have this big range right here, right? Where price was inside kind of this box area right here, right? So I want price to come out of this zone, right? I want it to come out, even though this is a big price zone, I'm waiting for some sort of push either to the upside or to the downside. So price made a push to the downside. So I know where can I look for to get uh, to, to tell me where did the initial um, push start to happen from and where can I draw my candle? So I'm sorry, my zone. So I'm going to take this off here because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to grab. Actually, no, I see a better example right here. I'm going to show this one instead, guys. This one right here, this is a better example, okay? So price was ranging in and out, in and out, in and out. Price finally broke out, finally broke out. And you're always gonna have this type of setup, guys, on your charts. You will always have this kind of setup. Let me make this a little brighter because it's a little, uh... there we go. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna have a little bit of a range and you're gonna have a breakout. So what was your breakout candle that broke below all of your, your previous ranges? This candle right here. So I'm gonna take my rectangle and I'm gonna draw it from the top of the body. Coincidental, this one doesn't have a wick either. And draw it to the bottom of the wick and I'm gonna drag it all the way over. All the way over and try and you drag it as far as you can. As far as you can, guys. Okay. Alright, so check this out. Okay, I'm gonna blow your mind in a minute. 
Now, looking at this structure right here, we had a range here and price broke out. So now we have a nice little supply area right here at the top here. Price came up, tried to retest, pretty much retested the wick and then continued down. So what you're looking for when you're trading supply and demand, guys, you're trying to see when price gets back to that area, what does it do? How does it react to that area? Does it have, have another sharp push through it or does it have a sharp reversal and continue in the opposite direction? That is going to tell you how you're going to enter into the market, but, but you're using that in conjunction with your other confluences. So you don't just wait for price to get there and then take an immediate order without seeing what the candles are doing because they can easily fly through your, your supply or demand zone or it can reverse and come, and come back down. It's up to you to know what it's doing, but you have to let the candles close. You gotta let the um, price action tell you what the market is going to do. Okay, so if we look at structure here, you'll see we have a breakout here. We have our supply zone. So we drag this all the way over. So while all this is happening, I want to see what will price do when it comes back in here. Is price going to have a strong reaction like it did here and just tanked or is it going to range or is it going to break above? And as you guys can see, price came inside here, it ranged a little bit, came down, tested that same area. So this is why I draw my zone from wick to wick. I don't draw it from the bodies, I don't draw it from the middle to the bot, whatever. I draw it from wick to wick because wicks are very important in candles and in, in reading price action and candlestick structure. Have to understand that wicks tell you where price tried to get to. It's not just about the body. The body just tells you where price closed and opened from. That's all the bodies tell you and how strong the, the momentum is in that time frame. But the wicks tell you, hey, if the wick is up here and the body closed right here, it's telling me that price at one point was up here. It couldn't break, it came back and it either closed here or went down lower and closed below. If I'm looking at a bottom wick, maybe the, the wick is down here and the body closed right here. It tells me that at one point price was down here. That is very telling when it comes to reading candlestick structure. So I draw it from wick to wick because it means that price at one point was at that level. So there's no telling if price can get back to that level again. And if it can get back to that level, will it have a reaction at that level or will it come back down or go up? You know, it depends on what the candles are doing. So when you draw your zones from wick to wick, you give yourself a window, kind of a window, because uh, trading guys is not black and white. It's very, very gray. This, you know, price isn't going to react to the T every single time. That's why you have to gauge how you enter your trades, where you put your stop losses, because you have to give price action time to breathe, time to move around, time to tell you what the market wants to do. So now that we have our, our zone labeled off here, if you look here, once price came up here, now I'm paying attention. Price is now back into my supply zone. So now I'm paying attention. I'm looking to see what is price going to do when it comes back inside this box, this window that I have here, okay? So price is bouncing up and down. Now I'm expecting something to happen. I just don't know when it's going to happen. I gotta gauge off the candles. I gotta gauge off the session that I'm trading. I have to gauge off the momentum that's in that session. All of that, all these things come into play, okay? so. Once price comes up here, I am waiting to see, is price going to sharply reject and come down or is it going to come back up? I'm going to wait and see. So price came down here and I know I have my open of my supply zone and I have my close of my supply zone here. So I know I'm waiting for something to happen either above my zone or below my zone or somewhere in that area, okay? So price came up here and it bounced and bounced and bounced. So I have, and this is why I say, use your supply and demand zones along with your support and resistance because up here we have somewhat of a resistance that's up here, right? Price came down, tapped, broke down again, came up, tap, tap, tap. We have a resistance and then that resistance is now turned into a support. So price broke above support. Now for us to maintain buys, right? because we're in an uptrend at this point, I wanna see price come back either to retest this area or to continue breaking highs and make new high, higher highs and higher lows for price action and market structure to continue bullish. So I wanna see price remain above here. Price remains above here, then I know I'm still in a buyer's market. So as I'm continuing up and I'm breaking highs, I wanna to look to see what are the candle bodies doing, okay? So the candle bodies are forming, we're ranging, we're ranging, 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 ranging. And as you can see, it's two o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning now. So two o'clock in the morning, Eastern time, my time is London session. London session kicks off at three o'clock. So I know that I'm in my supply zone, price is ranging. I know at three o'clock, I can expect some type of move to happen. And what happened at 
330. Price came down, formed a support inside my supply zone, and then continued up. Once pr price broke this high here, it came down. Now we are off and running because we have a lot of volume inside of London session that's going to push price where it needs to go. So I know that in this area I have, so let's, let's look at, I have how many confluences, how many confirmations that are telling me what trade I need to take in this area. Well, trade, uh, conf confluence number one is I have my supply zone. Okay. I didn't show you guys demand zone yet. We'll get to that in a second, but for now we're going to stick with supply. I have my first confluence, which is my supply zone. So I'm looking to see what price does in here. Second is I have my session that I'm in. I'm looking at this charting in London session. It's not London session now, obviously, but while we're looking at it here, it's in London session. So I know between 2.30, 3 o'clock and 3.30, I should expect some sort of volume to come in to push price eventually where it needs to go. So I have that. Third confluence is I have an uptrend, price is clearly pushing up, and I have a resistance that was broken, and I need it to maintain that, res that, that resistance turn support so it continues up. When you have levels that were once a support turn resistance or resistance turn support, those are uh, those are uh, important price levels that you have to pay attention to and more than likely they're strong price levels okay because at one point price couldn't break above and then at another point it can't break below okay and then I have my my trend line that's telling me you know price is, is pushing up the more you know we all know the more it touches you have to your trend line the stronger the trend is you know it, that's relative depending on how you draw your trend line okay so I know I have this resistance, I have it now as a support, and I have candles breaking highs, and I know I have the volume that's coming in the session to push price. So the next best thing to do is to wait for price to have some sort of retest of that level to continue. And guys, this was your retest. Price broke above, came down, created a support above your highs, and where is it? Above your supply zone. Above your supply zone, which means this price area should hold for price to continue bullish. Now, is it always going to hold? No, it may come right back down. You don't know, but you have to wait and see. If price creates a support and it, and, it, and, it made, and it made a high, chances are it's going to create a new high once it creates a support to hold price for price to continue in the direction that it wants to go in, okay? And if you look here, we drew, we drew our, our, the top of our supply zone all the way up here at the top of the body and look at where price retested. It retested again and look where it retested right to the T exactly to the T of the top of this candle body right here. Okay. All the way over. And if I drag this all the way over, let's continue dragging it a little bit here. And this is what I mean guys. When I say that price, uh, uh, trading is not always a black and white science. It's more gray because sometimes price is not always going to come to the T as you can see here, price tried to come down here and now it's ranging. Why is it ranging? Because we're out of session. We're out of session, there's no volume in the market. Price is ranging. Now, can it come down and tap and play around a little bit? Yeah, but if price comes here and reverses, then I know, hey, it's reversing because this area was once a supply zone and now it could be acting as a demand zone for price to continue bullish, okay? And if I pull price down here, you guys will see that we're hitting a major level here, a major price level here. If I draw this here, right here, we have a level that was once resistance acting as a support bounced one, two, three times came down, wasn't able to come down anymore. Finally came down, broke through below. Now it's testing, testing it underneath. It's underneath our, our level here. Now it's acting as a resistance again. So can price play around in here and then turn around and shoot up? Yes. Can it shoot down? Yes. How are you going to know this? By watching price action and seeing how the candlesticks form and looking for your supply and demand zones to work in conjunction with your support and resistance. Okay. So let's go back here and look at demand. Okay. So we have our supply zone mapped out up here. So we're looking for our demand zone. Now the demand, sometimes it's not as clear, right? Demand zone may not always be as clear. We're looking for a big push, a big move to see what happened. Let me take some of this stuff off here so that I like a clean chart. Okay. So looking at this here, we're looking for a big move to the upside. Where did the move actually start from here? Now it's difficult to say right here, right? Because there's no clear, like, uh, bullish trend like, as like there was a bearish trend over here. So you got to find the best move that tells you, hey, where can I have 
my demand zone missed it off. Sometimes you may not even have a demand zone, guys, because you may not have an area that's a big push. All you know is that price came down here and it wasn't able to, to, to it wasn't able to break below. So more than likely, you're more than likely just going to have a resistance. Some, I'm sorry, a support uh, down at the bottom somewhere here where price tried to break through and it couldn't. So we have a tap here, another tap, and then price just broke above and then continued pushing bullish. If I had to pick a demand zone here. It would probably be here because this is the candle that broke above all these highs here. So, yeah, it would be this candle here. So I would draw it from the bottom of the wick. Let's move this down a little bit to the top wick and then drag it all the way over. So that's telling me now that if price does break below my supply zone up here, that it may come down and test my demand zone down here. So if I don't get any kind of reaction here, which I probably should, I'm probably gonna get one down here, okay? Because this is the last time price was in this area, it had a hard time breaking. It came down from the double bottom and then continued bullish, okay? Another thing you wanna look at with supply and demand zone, guys, supply and demand zones, is you wanna look at how many taps you have at a specific zone. Well, Charlene, what do you mean by taps? Okay, let's talk about it. Uh, <laughs> let's see if I can find a good example for you guys. Right here, okay? So... We had a strong push to the downside, price bounced, 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 and then it came right back up. Um, actually, no, that's not a good example because price didn't continue down. Okay, right here, perfect example, right here, okay? So we had a strong push to the downside right here, price pushed up, found resistance, and then it started coming right back down. So my supply zone, where did the move start? It started right around here this candle broke these lows here so i'm going to start it right here it's going to be my supply zone right up here the bottom right here and i'm going to drag it all the way over let's pull this down boom okay when you have a um supply and demand zone guys the you want to look for one or two taps of that zone and then a strong rejection to the downside okay what do i mean basically if you have your supply zone or even demand zone it could be it could work for vice versa you want price to tap it one to two times and then tank after that or vice versa tap it and then go up depending on supply and demand so i have my supply zone labeled off here i have price that came once tapped two tapped did not quite tap it right didn't quite tap it but came close to it but every time price came up here what did it do price Came here, started the push down. Tried to come back up, came back down again. Tried to come back up, came back down again. Finally was able to break. And when it did break, it ranged inside here until it broke above. And then it broke above. And if I pull this all the way across, instead of price bouncing below, price broke above and now it's holding. So now we have a very strong level. We have a strong zone here because we have a supply zone that was holding strong as a supply and now it's acting as demand. So another secret guys is your supply and demand zones can act as the same as support and resistance in terms of strong price levels. So when you have a supply zone turn demand zone in a specific area, pay attention to that specific area. And it doesn't, you don't know how big that area can be. It can be 50 pips, it can be 40 pips, it can be 10 pips, it can be as many pips. It depends on the size of the candle, the size of the move, and how strong that price area is. So every time price comes through this area here, I need to pay attention, okay? So in this case, we had two taps, price dropped, finally came back up. Broke above, finally, one, two taps, and then broke above. So you want minimum two taps, a minimum of two trying taps or two retests, if you will, of that area for you to have a little more prob uh, confirmation and a higher probability of price uh, reacting to that area in the, in the uh, direction that you think price is going to go, depending on whether it's supply or demand or vice versa, okay? So here we have a supply zone drop, one tap, two tap, broke above, now we have a now a supply turn demand zone one tap two tap broke above okay 
if you guys train your eyes to read the markets for you to look at price action to look at supply and demand to look at support and resistance to look at candlestick analysis all these things matter all these things will help you better improve your trading these things will give you more confirmation you'll have more confidence in taking specific setups because you'll see you'll your, your eyes will be trained to see these things better okay another thing is guys which is the last secret i'm going to share with you guys okay i have a lot more stuff but all that is in my course a lot more is uh, it's obviously i go into a lot more detail with it in the course but this is just to kind of wet your beak a little bit okay and to help you guys out for those of you that trade su uh, supply and demand when you're looking for supply and demand zones the candle that you draw your supply and demand zone on no candle should break that candle's high or that candle's low so in other words if i draw a supply zone up here and i'm going to draw a makeshift uh demand zone down here Okay, let's say this is my demand zone. No, I'm gonna draw it here just be a better example. Okay, let's say this is my demand zone here. Okay, we have I have my supply zone up here and I draw it from the top to the bottom. Okay, and this is I don't know why this is appearing shorter. This should be taller, right? Like that. Okay. The the next candles that come after you draw your zone should not break that candle's high. If it does break that candle's high. Now that level could be invalidated at that point, okay? This is what I mean. If I draw the start of my supply zone right there where I have it labeled off right here, none of these candles should be higher than that candle. It shouldn't. If it is, that's not a valid zone, okay? You want the, 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 the next candles, preceding candles, whatever it is, to be lower than that candle's high. They should not break that candle high. Once it breaks this high, then you're looking at a different set of structure here because now this high was broken with this move here. Once it was broken, what happened? It turned into a demand. It turned into a support. Okay. So after you get your two taps, make sure those two taps do not break that candle's high. Okay. Same with demand. You have the demand zone. You draw it at the bottom here. Your candles should not break this candle's low. You have one tap, two tap, three taps here, and then price broke above. If these taps, if this had came down here and wicked below here, this would not be your demand zone. Your demand zone would have started here at the bottom of that wick, wherever it, it wicked out from. Okay. So once you get your taps, one, two, three taps is a little much, but you get one or two taps. That's your, that's your golden number. One, two taps. Okay. You get your two taps. It should not break that high or that low, but wait for a candlestick to close for them to give you more confirmation in where the candles are going to go and understand that your supply and demand zones can easily flip and turn into your support and resistance zones. You just have to pay attention to market structure and price action. Okay, guys. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this video. I did um, shorten it down a lot. There's a lot more I could talk to you guys about with uh, supply and demand, but these are some of the more important topics that you want to look at. Some of the more things you want to recognize, practice it, see if you can identify these things on your time frame, on your uh, charts, understand that you want to use them on your 15, 30, maybe your one hour time frame. Sometimes you can use it on the four hour, depending on what pair that you use to trade it on. Um, but it works. It works like, like magic. It does really, really good job. Um, but only, only if you use it in conjunction with your other confirmations and your other, uh, confluences, if you don't use it with them guys, you're going to be gambling with your trade. You're just going to be entering blindly on things and just hoping that the trade plays out in your favor. And 99% of the time it won't play out that way. So I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. If you liked it, please drop a like, please subscribe. I definitely will have a lot more videos for you guys with things like this. Um, also, um, please follow me on Instagram. I, I, I love how my Instagram is growing. I'm getting new followers every day. I, I love that you guys are learning from my from my channel, getting a lot of value out of it. It's, it's really, really, really uh, a lot of fun for me to make these videos for you. I love teaching. I love uh, helping people understand this trade and helping them, you know, elevate and get better and, you know, see a real difference and grow consistency with their trading. So again, guys, hope you guys like this video. Please, um, I do have a course. If you don't know, it's called Simple FX Academy where I teach basic price action um, trading. I do go into more 
scalping than anything else i do intraday from time to time but i do not swing trade guys i'm sorry if you want to uh, swing trade I'm, I'm not the one for you i don't <laughs> i don't like swing trading i don't teach it i don't do it but uh intraday and scalping mainly i can definitely help you master that so you can be able to be able to profit out of these markets every single day and also i do run a live trading session every night monday through friday at three o'clock london session we kick it off and we do that every single night where i do full breakdowns full analysis and i call live trades for everybody that's on for us to be able to learn together to grow together to earn together and to be able to crush these markets all together as one big happy family <laughs> okay so appreciate you guys for watching this video i really hope you like it like the video drop a subscribe if you're not already subscribed and hit the bell notification that way you're notified when i drop my videos so with that i'm going to close it out here peace and love and i'll catch you guys on the next video